Hi, this is Becky Grumlick with the Watercolor Classroom and Tuesday Watercolor Tips. Today we're going to paint a snowman, um, Charlie the Snowman. And I'm going to show you how to leave the white without using Frisket. Now that's very difficult to do in little small areas. And on the trees, I probably won't do it that way. But for the snowman, we will and get that idea. So I'm going to start with getting some sky in, and I'm going to wet the whole paper. This is a quill brush. It's by Silver, and it's a size 80. It's called a Golden Talcon. I'm being very careful around the snowman because I want it to stay white. smooth. I'm going to keep that board. I'm also painting right over uh, the snow that's going to be on the snow uh, trees. Now while it's wet, I want to drop in some of these pine trees. I'm going to use Hooker's Green. And I'm going to use some sap green. Now see it's going to spread far so you want to be a little careful and I'm going right up to that snowman. So far that's just hookers. Snowman lost his point in snow tree. Okay, so we have some, I've mixed some ultramarine blue and some Payne's gray. And now sky is darker at the top than it is at the bottom. And I'm just gonna drop in bits of sky over here. It would have been better to drop in the trees after the sky, but there you have it now. I'm going to clean my brush and water some more. Paint down a little bit more. Paper's dried down here only. Rinsing again and coming down with more water so that by the time it gets to the bottom it's pretty faded. Now that's a very low horizon line but it can be changed and so I would rather have the sky come a little bit too low and then change it later than have it the other way around. That tree's getting funny shaped. And now I'm going to use that same blue on Charlie. These trees are dry enough that's not going to run in there. And this seems really, really dark, but if you want something to look 3D, it has to have dark parts. Drying my brush to move the shadow over, and then dipping it and drying it again. I use a cellulose sponge, and so it's on the cellulose sponge. And then I'm gonna really rinse my brush because I want to bring this over so that it disappears and you can't tell where the line starts. Okay, now, over here is pretty dark too in the shadow. Rinsing my brush, drawing it on my sponge and then coming over here. And then at this stage, while it's wet, I get a little bit of pink because I like rosy cheeks, even on snowmen. And then it spreads out and I'll spread it a little bit further so it's not quite such a dark spot. I find that 
it's easier to paint with a bigger brush. I used to paint almost entirely with this tiny brush, as tiny of brushes as I could, and kind of discovered that it's It's not easier. And it, it tends to take away the fresh look, too. And we'll put a few reflections of snow in the trees and on the snow because that happens. Not much. And I'll even put some red in because he's going to have a red scarf. And hat. Okay. Putting a little bit of the dark into this tree. And this is wet right now, so I'm going to make this tree come down to here. And then that one will have more detail because it's further for forward. And I'm going to soften that edge with just a dry brush dry, barely damp brush. All right, let's move on to Charlie. Now I just realized I should have drawn his whole scarf and left it white because now the red, excuse me, the red is going to look a different color on top of the green than it does on top of white. That's much prettier on the white. I turn my paper around so that the brush is pointing away from my hand and it makes it easier to get that crisp edge because painting like this isn't as convenient. All right, I'm gonna mix some brown If you've watched my videos, you know that I always mix rust and blue to make my browns. And you can get this grayish brown or you can add more rust and get a browner brown or you can get a more red brown by adding even more. It's kind of fun. Now that color is quite dark. It doesn't look at that dark on the palette, but I'm gonna water some down. I think it's dry enough here. Get this post done. Now I left this post white, but I didn't leave the tip of the post white. And so I'm going to use a slightly more rust brown up there since it's mixing with blue. too dark. Give it a dab. The sign is going to be just slightly caramel colored. And then after I put the words into it, which are going to say Happy New Year. Then I'll want some snow coming around here. I'm going to pencil in my words really lightly. Not necessarily follow them exactly, but help me get them a little bit centered. And then I'm using a marker for the words. All right, 
Now I want to go in and get some more detail into this old looking board. It has cracks in it. It's uneven. I want to keep it right, pretty light where the writing is though, so that you can. And we'll do Charlie's arms. I think I'll do his other arm later after I get the snow on the trees. The next thing is the bleed proof white and you want to get a puddle on your palette that's pretty big because I'm going to do the snow with this too. And it's good to put the lid on right away because it because it can um, dry out. So we're gonna make this have some triangular triangular snow places on it. Not a very exact science here. Oh, that sure went on more gracefully with a little more water. So I'm going to kind of go back over these. See if I can accomplish that a little bit better, that more fresh look. And this fur here, I'm just going to make it whiter. And fluffier. I've seen people actually put poofy stuff on, but that tends to go flat later on. Okay. One last bit of bleed proof white is at the top of these snow mounds. Nice red carrot, orange, but it's a sort of a, well, it almost looks red. I think I'll add some gamboge to it to it is actually an orange. I'm using Payne's Gray for that. We need some buttons. Since he's facing this way, the buttons are towards this side. Last but not least is a little bit of shading. I'm going to put some alizarin crimson in the folds of his hat. Shadowing on the, the ball and the this, this would, if you want it to look round, it needs to have some shadow here. And then clean the brush and just dab that up in, with bumps so it looks like it's, it's, it's a, it's 
soft and fluffy. Same thing on here. Now before you do the snow, you need everything to be dry or it'll just run into those places that are wet. So I'd try something new for the snow this time. This is, I'm gonna add a little bit of water, but this is a stencil brush and I'm gonna get my fingers messy. And I'm gonna try it on a separate piece of paper, which this is a failed snowman. I think that's gonna work, but it's gonna take a lot more. Okay. Well, that speeds things up a lot. It's a very fast way to put the snow on. I declare that to be a snowstorm. And now we should take the tape off. That always is so much fun. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and the subscribe and send me a note. I'd love to hear from you. That would be great. Thank you so much for watching.